Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to the video. Um, I, so I wanted to do, uh, not, it's not a reshoot of yesterday's video, but I was very unsatisfied with the video that I did yesterday. Unfortunately, as I started recording, a neighbor was hammering intermittently throughout the whole video recording process. And it not only made me rush through the video, but just I was just completely distracted and trying to kind of stay on point. And so ultimately, uh, it's just, it's like there's big gaps in the audio and it just wasn't what I wanted it to be. So this video is all different material. It's all Michael Golden, but I would highly, highly recommend you check out this video. Uh, most of the stuff that you're going to see is off of original art. Um, there, are, there are a few prints and a few comic book covers, but it's a great video. And uh, I think it'll really um, get you excited about drawing and maybe trying some of the techniques and stuff that he uses. And uh, the only other thing that I wanted to say is... Um, uh, I'm going to be posting less videos to YouTube over probably the next like two to three months. I'm not leaving YouTube, so it's not one of those sort of like... Uh, type of announcements, but I'm really busy and I'm trying to produce work that you all want to see, which is the creator own stuff. So I have to sacrifice time somewhere. So I'm, I'll continue with Patreon if you really like want to see more videos, um, more frequently. But other than that, um, yeah, it's just, it, it's like, I don't want to rush through YouTube videos just to put them up. And, uh, that's kind of how I feel like I've been doing them lately and that's not cool either. So, uh, anyway, enjoy this video and I'll, I'll be back whenever I have free time, like true free time to do a video. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, we will talk soon, but enjoy this video cause it's very good. All right, later. Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a video. Um, so yesterday when I did my Michael Golden video, I kind of thought that it sucked, but it was like I had, you know, spent 30 minutes recording it and then I had to make a decision based on the hammering going on as I was filming the video and it was I originally was going to try to edit out each hammer ping. It was impossible. There was no way because I was talking over it, so it was chopping up my words. So all I could do is like mute the audio, and then um, I just kind of felt like I was rushing. Like it threw me off my game because it, it's like, you know, seven minutes into a video, you start hearing all this like random noise outside, and it was impossible for me to like mute it. But anyway, so I thought what I would do is I would do another Michael Golden video today. So um. I've uh, opened up probably about 30 files, and most of it is black and white, and most of it is from um, original art or reproductions of original art. So uh, what's interesting is, and I'm going to plug this guy's site really quick. So um, this is the URL for it. Uh, I think his name is Steve Vander Plug. Um, uh, had had taken photographs of these uh, G.I. Joe um, plates from the G.I. Joe yearbook artist edition. So this is a little different than um, an actual artist edition book. It comes in a hardcover thing. These are full size scanned off the original art, but it's only 23 pages worth of work. But here's the deal. I'm just going to give you guys a heads up. IDW still has these on their site for 40 bucks. Okay. On eBay, people are buying them for $100 for the exact cover. If you look in completed auctions for G.I. Joe yearbook, it's the same exact book. It's a variant cover. It's not probably the original cover that they released it in, but still $100 bucks versus $40. Um, and you can use PayPal. So um, I would highly recommend if you're into the G.I. Joe uh, yearbook in particular, just go to IDW site and order it because the stuff is badass. It's really, really good. But I've got a whole bunch of stuff opened and... Um, yeah, we're going to look at art. We'll have a little bit of a casual chat and uh, yeah, let's get it on. I had had people mention this uh, portfolio set to me before and I had never seen it. And I didn't really, um, I had never seen his G.I. Joe work, to be honest. So uh, seeing these scans, I was really blown away. So one thing that Mike is really, really good at is, is distorting perspective. And you can kind of see in this um, page in particular how he... he um, kind of tweaks things it's it's not curvilinear but he really really starts to distort um tires and stuff like that he's really really good at it um and well these aren't the hugest scans the other scans that i have are gigantic but these are beautiful pages um you know and and my theory on artist editions is has always been this and i think patreon people have heard me mention this before it's the best hundred dollars that you can almost spend but yeah you know look 
you spend 40 bucks on this and you learn two or three things that make your art better you're gonna the rewards from it are gonna be like tenfold more than that honestly so i would always recommend saving up your money and picking up one or two of these and then just pour over it get your eyes and your mind used to seeing art that looks like this or whoever you pick up an artist edition from because what ends up happening there's there's multiple things that happen when you learn to draw and one of them is beyond the education and actually knowing hard facts you start to develop an intuition of what looks right what looks cool how to lay things out and it just becomes more instinctual how it becomes instinctual part of it is honestly just looking at good art and if you're looking at it full size and in black and white it's about as close as you're going to get to really burning that into your mind you know what i mean like someone who's a huge fan of this and has looked at these books a million times when they need to do a shot of something you know like a bridge with train tracks or some sort of world war ii looking um you know i don't know what what era the gi joe stuff takes place in specifically but um you know what i mean you're already going to have a visual library of of what you need to pull out and that's huge. So seeing it full size also gets you used to the size relationships and actual like real estate that objects take place, uh, take up, um, which is really, really incredibly important for layout. And, and I've warned people about uh, digitally laying stuff out. I mean, there's definitely trends that I see for people that work digitally, which is the work becomes underwhelming because you're not using space well. So it's just one of those things i can see it i can almost always tell when someone works part of their process digitally there's a few things that happen one is they use space ineffectively and two they use size ineffectively but it's just my own opinion on it i think that they could work it out if they had a good combination of both but like it's it's um uh, you know size and composition just on the basis of abstract alone is so important to a dynamic piece of art it just is you know all this little detail is just extras you know it really is but anyway we're going to get to the huge scans but these are beautiful beautiful pieces so i want to get people excited about this and um man idw just crushes it with these books it's it's i, I mean i know um graffiti does them now and there's other companies that are doing them but but you just can never go wrong with this stuff there's a lone wolf and cub one now and uh man this is just so sick 40 bucks is great too look at that uh, you can find uh, there was a Jurassic Park uh, print set that they did years ago of Michael Golden stuff and someone at Wildstorm had picked it up and I made photocopies of the whole thing so somewhere I have like all the Jurassic Park covers in black and white. I don't know where it is right now, but definitely worth looking for. They're they're not scanned off the original board, so they're they're pure black and white, but still they're they're high res big scans of the stuff. Artist editions hadn't really sort of taken off at that point. Uh, well, they really didn't exist except maybe in fine art books. Okay, we've sort of seen this page. Um, I think I might. Oh yeah, and so what's interesting with the the um, this print case uh, print set is they did um, you get two versions of the page. You get it lettered and unlettered, which I think is really really cool. I'm assuming maybe they're on uh, one board, so one side will be unlettered, one is lettered. But I, I thought that was pretty neat. So okay, we're gonna get into the. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> Michael Goldman is so great. But yeah, so I apologize for yesterday yesterday's video because it kind of sucked. But I was just I was torn between not doing it at all or just getting it up. And I was just like, all right, just get it up. I think what I'm gonna do moving forward though, honestly, is just like if I can't spend time on the videos, I'm just not gonna do it anymore. Um, because I don't like posting up sort of shitty content. I'm I I would rather post less, have it better. So this is a Marvel fanfare cover. Um and uh all right fuck off <laughs> notification um this is really cool i wonder what that little blemish is there it looks like white like a little bit of watery white paint got on it oh it could be the glue um you can kind of see the board is cut right here so some of this is a paste up do you see this it looks like maybe he cut out the 
figure like some of this has been been um superimposed back on the board i'm not it looks like this this is above this so interesting so he he either edited it self-edited or um this is all cut up it's interesting yeah you know i mean ultimately you know you're a picture maker and so if something isn't working for you never be intimidated to just scrap it and start over i was listening to an interview with joe hill about writing and uh, he's a really interesting guy i would highly recommend um if you're looking for a little bit of background noise um look around on youtube and find any interviews with him because he's he's he, he seems really cool and he's very intelligent but um uh he was talking about these are just some Michael Golden covers I thought might be fun to look at. Um, there's only like three or four of the color ones, but uh, yeah, Joe was saying that like like he does he'll do a first draft of a script for himself, and uh, it's only for him to see. But he says he might rev revise stuff sometimes 13 to 18 times, which I thought was pretty interesting. This is a great cover right here. Um, again, just so dynamic this this sweeping motion that he gets um, with the stuff is just so cool. This is a nice one too. Not a great scam, but it's still cool. I love how he always does this with <laughs> he'll have stuff framing the piece sort of in the foreground. Um, and it's always really, really strongly lit with all these like cool shadows and stuff like that. So it's badass. This is nice too. Very classical. And this looks a little bit like the Bucky O'Hare um stuff to me, like that era. It's nice though. Yeah, golden is so good. Oh yeah, this I have this cover, this comic. It's weird. I'm almost thinking this could have Mignola interior. Seventy nine? No, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. But uh, I definitely have this comic. And there's golden signature right there. Let's see. Oh, okay, one more. I think this is the last one off the comic. Again, that heavy lighting, you know. Okay, and these should all be like, yeah, okay, so here we go. So this is a Marvel Fanfare cover. Really, really nice. It's kind of cartoony. It's funny. It's, it's, I mean, his work is cartoony, but like this is almost got like funny, funny anatomy the way that it's sort of bloopy. Yeah, it's really, really cool. And it's nice inks, you know. Uh, I could only be guessing of what tool it is. I'm not really good at spotting it, honestly. I know people would assume that maybe I, I would have better insight. I really don't. <laughs> I've never really cared that much, honestly. Like, like the only time I care is if I really, really, like, if there's an effect and I can't seem to figure out a way to do it. That's more perplexing. I mean, the fact that if he used a 102 or a brush or a brush pen or whatever... I don't really care because I mean this stuff I can mimic these lines with a, a few different tools, so this is nice. You can see like how Arthur Adams would would maybe be a fan of this. This is such a great piece, man. That is so wild. I love the that this stuff has aged and turned this weird color too. Like it looks cool because it makes it look like he's got like bronze or like gold like over him. Yeah, some of the old uh, Zipatone or whatever that is. Maybe it's Duo Shade. Other, like, again, people will know. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it can kind of yellow. It looks like Zipatone to me. But who knows? Boom. Oh, yes, this is nice. I actually have a bunch of sheets of this kind of Zipatone. Travis and I used it a little tiny bit at one point. Not on Wild, it was like early Wildcats or something like that. It might have been some of my samples, but uh, yeah, it's a cool. What's so funny is when I first saw Zipatone, I had no idea what it was, and I assumed that people did this by hand. Not not something as crazy as this, but I had seen some of the dotted stuff, and I was like, man, that's nuts. Like, what do they do? Rule it out, like, kind of like this effect. And I, I thought that, like, I mean, I'm stupid enough where I would actually try to do it with a, a pen, um, but that's that's just like you know not really wise <laughs> this would be you could never do a fade like that traditionally but you could do some effects like that i used to do splatter 
um, by hand, like not splattering it, but literally drawing it. And it was pretty, it looked pretty convincing. You wouldn't be able to tell that it wasn't like uh, done with like a brush. This is cool. I love how the lettering is like popping off of this board. This looks really cool. Yeah, people were talking about the ROM uh, Space Knight covers. They are very, very cool. I wish that I had more uh, uh, black and white copies of them, but this is nice. But yeah, so so I may start doing less YouTube videos for a little while because I'm really trying to get a lot of stuff done right now. And I think that people would be way more into me producing a lot of art than just doing sort of like average book reviews at best. Um, so I'm just going to focus on that. And then if I have time to do uh, YouTube videos, I'll just do them anytime. So it won't be relegated to just Sunday. Um, I think that that'll work out better and they will be a little, you know, a little more enjoyable to watch. This is the Wildcats cover that he did. This was for a source book. I think source book one. It's nice. You know, I mean, I was really picky about like how I like to see the Wildcats drawn. Um, you know, if it didn't look like, you know, Jim Lee, Silvestri, or Travis, and, and I know that Mark didn't necessarily draw the Wildcats, but his aesthetics on, like, Cyber Force to me fit. So when I would see, you know, the characters looking a little more like this, I was kind of like, hmm, I don't know, I don't know. But this is still very, very kick-ass. It was funny because Barry Windsor Smith did some Wildstorm stuff, and it's actually really, really good. And I was a fan of Barry Windsor Smith at the time, but it... It, it still didn't feel like, you know, like, this is not my void. <laughs> but it's still a very cool piece. These are nice. So his NAM work, actually, over a period of, like, nine issues, or his, I, I don't I mean, he might have done, like, 13 issues. Um, it, it got more and more cartoony and more simplified, but within that, it's still excellent excellent work i mean it really really is um but the first the first stuff that i saw of michael gold and i usually share this story if we hit on the nam stuff is jj kirby javon kirby uh was like a huge michael golden fan and he was trying to get me into it and he showed me some of these later issues of nam and he's like look at this it's so good and i was like i don't i don't really get it i mean it's not bad but it wasn't like blowing me away and then when i saw nam number one i was like oh okay i get it i get it um but i had seen some of golden's other stuff but um yeah i think i have a few more nam pages but you'll see what i mean like like it's just a, it was so simple i was like well Detail was king back then. This is really, really nice. God, this is so crazy. It's cool how he did the background with the red. Man, that is just a ballsy Punisher. Whew. Lots of scopes. <laughs> That's funny shit. Oh, man. God, that gear is nuts. Man, this would take forever to fill in the blacks on, too. Oh, my God. Oh, this is nice. And this is, like, almost more traditional for him. I mean, you can see that it's golden by this, like, right here. But, but uh, I mean, if someone just showed it to me, I don't know if I would be able to immediately pick out that it was Michael Golden. It's very nice, though. Really, really good. And these are nice inks, you know. I'm not so particular about like every feathering line looking perfect. Um, I think that as long as the the um, overall uh, value that it creates is smooth, then it's fine. But I mean, you can have little anomalies sometimes within that, and uh, it doesn't bug me, you know. Yeah, it's more like you want like this like level of read to be good with in photoshop it kind of gets pixelated in between so this is a really really kick-ass page and i've always loved this page this is from a x-men annual i think it could be wrong on that maybe it's an x-men issue but um it's really really cool and i just man this is so awesome it's so kick-ass oh so x-men annual number one or volume one number seven so x-men annual seven really really cool page Yep, that gesture of Wolverine is so kick-ass. Yeah, what a 
Jesus. Oh, yeah, this is a House of Mystery, I think, short story. House of Secrets, number 151. It's a few pages. But this is really quite simple stuff. But I, I think that it, it's nice. Mignola did this in the first issue of Hellboy when Abe Sapien, or in the first miniseries for sure, the gates are at this angle kind of turned in. So you could see where maybe Mignola was a little bit influenced by this work. I'm telling you, man, it's like if you really go back and do your um, forensic uh, work, you can you can really discover some interesting connections with these artists. And I don't think it's... I, I don't find it a bad thing. Yeah, this is cool. I would definitely say that Mignola was inspired by this that's neat that's like that's a little something that i didn't know discovering that right now but i, I don't think it's a coincidence mignola did a different shot but he used this this uh idea this is cool yeah these are nice pages i like uh i i like the simplicity of it to be honest This one is interesting. Right. That's pretty cool. And that's a double. And that's a double. All right, what we got here? Oh yeah, this is cool. So this looks like it was a color guide for this piece, but uh, let's just check out the art. We'll start up here and uh, move through it. I have no idea what that character's name is. I've seen him before, but I don't know. I like Marvel, but I I don't read enough of the books to know. I know who that guy is, though. Man, it's so cool. This is awesome, man. God damn. I love pieces like this here. Let's pull out just a little bit for a second. So, yeah, I mean, this is just so cool. Fuck. Who is this? Is this a watcher? What the fuck is that guy's name? Um, Man, that is dope. Holy cow. Oh, oh dude. That is so cool. Look at Nightcrawler. That is clever shit right there. Dude. Wow. Man, that is so kick-ass. I love Nightcrawler. This is really good. Guys, this is such a great piece. Damn. What do you think? That's really cool. God, the... the that is so awesome too, man. Them reacting to this, dude. His Namor is great too. That is really nice. This is cool. Very like Jack Kirby pose. <clears throat> it was clever for him to make him go in this direction. This is a great Spidey pose too. Wow. Yeah. This is such an awesome piece. Damn. This is a Punisher cover. I can't even find his face. There it is. Wow, that is such a cool shot. Damn. Whew. You see what I'm saying? And this is the original art. This is how nice the original art looks. This is a full color scan off the OG. You see that? Look how neat this is. The paste ups. This guy was a technician. He must pencil very light. He may light box this stuff onto the board and then ink it, um, like pencil it and ink it, because um, I don't see any underdrawing on the paper unless he pencils very, very lightly, um, which wouldn't surprise me because these are very, very complex layouts. Um, and so with that, it would, it would make sense to maybe work it out on vellum or other sheets of paper and then put the piece onto a board uh, because usually you would see some sort of indication of pencil here. I mean, obviously it's been erased, but it, yeah, that's wild. And if he doesn't and he lays it out on the big board, God, that is nuts. This is nice. So apparently he did a run on Batman. I have never seen the issues, but I was seeing pages from it, so I'm curious to check that out. 
Um, looks a little earlier in his career, but it's still quite nice. This is really good. Good bat. This is some more Nam. This is a really great shot. I think some of the Nam stuff we looked at in another video, like the first one, I don't know if it was these exact pages. I'll remember there was one scene with a battleship that if I see it, I'll remember it for sure. But yeah, as I've matured as a consumer of art, I've I've grown to appreciate. I mean, this is a real nice page, but but uh, yeah, you just kind of like like if you're a fan of someone's art, it's just fun to sort of like check it all out, you know. This is great, man. He one thing that he did great on the Nam is types types of people. Like everybody's got a very unique look and structure to them. So like all the main characters just have a totally different vibe. You know, it's like the New York guy, the kind of sort of kid from the Midwest sort of thing. This is nice. The leaflets getting dropped, but uh, yeah, and and um, yeah, he's a real good cartoonist. This is what's that Avengers Annual. Can't remember what this was from. <laughs> Your signature on that one is like pretty interesting. Great, great gesture right there. This is awesome too. Man, this is so good. This is why sketching is so important, you know, uh, for for you to just be comfortable doodling, because you. This is how, like, to me, in my opinion, this is how you get drawings like this. Is like this guy could doodle this shit, and it would still look this good because he's just got such a competent, um, you know, like like he's able to speak with his pencil, you know. It looks very natural. It just doesn't look overworked. It doesn't look like he's like struggling with anything. It's just man, he just peppers it in, and uh, the result is great. You know, he's like a like a like a like a comic strip artist, uh, strip artist. I mean, this stuff looks more laborious. But this is earlier in his career. I mean, you know, it's like math versus English is how I've always described it. Is math is very logical and it's like this step this step and this step and then when you get really good at art it's just english and it's like speaking so this is i'm going to darken this a little bit this is the armor cover that um that uh die cut cover that i showed let's make it a little darker so i can see it better but this is off the original art this is a really interesting effect he did here it's really cool um yeah th this is probably brush strokes if i was going to guess but it looks really neat you don't really see that type of an effect used that often, but man, it's nuts. He must have just shaded in the sort of daggery shapes and then, you know, just went in carefully with a brush and did it. But yeah, it's really, really cool. I've I've honestly not seen too many people use brush hatching as that effect. As in fact, I can't really think of any examples of it really. I mean, people feather and do hatching, but not not like is this kind of a thing. That's uh, really cool. That guy's really neat. It, it's interesting too. Is in color, this thing looks way more shadowed. Like if I was gonna guess what it looks like, if you go back to watch that other video, it, it's like this face looked way more kind of insane but um i mean it still looks insane in black and white but it's actually got less of this black in here than i thought yes yeah, was what what is going on all right the text tool selected this was kind of some of the early stuff that i had seen of his where i was like eh, it's good whatever can see the rolling of the uh, lettering there. Yeah, 
yeah, this is his earlier work. It's definitely, I'm seeing Mike Plug in this. If you Google Plug, you'll see what I mean. Oh, yeah, this is really good. God, man. Some people are born to draw the Punisher. This guy does some pretty, pretty badass Punisher covers, if I do say so myself. That's great. This looks like it. Oh, so, what's this thing? So, this might have been a con sketch. There's two uh, different ones they use. And this does look like Jason Pearson. It's actually funny that I was saying that Pearson is pretty heavily influenced by Golden, but uh, apparently when Golden sketches, his stuff looks a little like Jason Pearson. That's nice. Yeah, this was another one. But again, this looks like Pearson to me. If like, someone told me it was a Pearson con sketch, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really probably think twice about it that much. These are from a Doctor Strange print set. So these are prints of pieces that he did. Print sets were pretty big in the, I guess, late 70s, early 80s. These were early early versions of Artist Editions. <laughs> you get like four, four to ten pieces in a little portfolio slipcase thing. But they were black and white and, you know, kind of fancier reproductions. Pretty nice piece. This is the cover which we've seen the original of. So nice. Oh, it's such a great piece. This is really, really cool. Yeah, and this just looks so Arthur Adams to me. It's so funny. Uh, okay, we saw this cover. Oh, yeah, this is a NAM page. Man, this is so crazy. His use of Zipatone is nice. I think that was really effective. I mean, it definitely gives those boards like a slightly different texture and really um, gives it a level of attention. Like, like you, you focus on this because it looks interesting. Um, this is a great, great panel. And then that's just nuts. Rats. His light source is strong. And even here, this is cool. It's good stuff. I love I love how Michael Golden uses space and negative space. He'll do this. Some of the Jurassic Park covers have this vibe too, where there's a lot of like open room. Um, but you know, you see it from like this, and it just is nice. It's just got a really nice feel to it. It uses this the space um in an abstract dynamic way of the blade blurring and stuff like that and stuff um like ground fire shooting up past them it's really really cool and i mean you know as a someone that's a colorist i mean getting this is just a joy to color because it's so creative and it's just such a moment of the story that you know you're like yeah i've, I've already got ideas so it's important to set up your black and white art that way, you know? Again, like this, it's like you just look at this, and if you are a colorist, you go, yes, let me color this. I want to do this. This looks so fun. You can light up the robot, and then these guys, and, you know. This is, again, kind of earlier stuff. This might be the Avengers uh, annual page. It's nice. So hopefully with, with the two videos that I posted up, we've covered Michael Golden quite well now and people can feel satisfied with uh, the experience. And then, uh, yeah, the ball's in your court. Are you going to get the G.I. Joe yearbook, IDW book? I would recommend it personally. 40 bucks with shipping will probably be like 46, 47 bucks. It'll be worth it. This is nice. <laughs> that guy's cool. Oh, that's really neat. At times, I get a little tiny bit of a Wally Wood feel from his work. I don't know if it was an influence on him, but I've thought that a few times and not kind of said it, but but a little bit of this retro sort of weaponry and stuff like that, uh, even the way that he lights it at times has a little... And even kind of the encrypted nature of Michael Golden's stuff uh, reminds me a bit of Wally Wood. So this is nice. It's a beautiful piece. The inks are great. Cap 
having a bad day. Okay, we got one more piece. It might even be one we've already seen. I think it is. Um, all right, well, have a great day. And again, you know, don't like, like, if I'm not posting YouTube videos, the reason being is that I'm working and trying to actually provide more original art and create our own material for everyone. Because it's like, I could spin my wheels on YouTube and, and all the other stuff that, that takes up time in the day. Or I could be working on stuff that I think people might be more excited about. So I'm going with that in 2020. It's time to streamline shit a little bit. So anyway, have a great day. Hopefully that, that was fun to check out. I, I think it was pretty neat. And uh, some really, really good stuff and a lot of ideas. And again, that's what you want. You want to start burning these ideas into your head. And it's absolutely incredible when you're under the gun and you have no books out and you'll pull off drawings and pull things out of your memory not even that you're drawing it like what you saw but you'll have the answers to the questions the the the, the problems that you need to solve just based on looking at good art but you know i would recommend looking at it in black and white i think that that'll help you you could kind of get overwhelmed with the color and all the cuts and things that they do and uh it definitely will make it easier to study when you see stuff in black and white because probably that's how you're going to draw it to some extent either in pencil digitally or uh you know with pen and ink so all right have a great day i love you all and i'll talk to you soon